Hi everyone, my name is Brian McDonald. I'm a senior research assistant at Oregon State University. The presentation I'm about to show you is part of our 2021 Microdokium Patch Field Day. And of course, this presentation has absolutely nothing to do about Microdokium Patch. I'm going to talk about our uh, trial we initiated this fall, uh, Tall Fescue Winter Fertility Trial. When you talk about Tall Fescue, a lot of people still envision this, this version of it, which is the wild type. And you can see how coarse and rank and ugly it looks. But breeding efforts over the last 20 years have substantially improved the turf type tall fescues. Here's a photo on the right showing a photo of one of the new improved turf type tall fescues. And you can see the quality is much improved from the old wild types. Uh, in the last five or 10 years, homeowners have planted more and more tall fescue because I think primarily it's drought resistance, which it's ability to go longer without water and people's hope for lower water bills. Um, it also has good wear tolerance and sort of perceived as a low maintenance grass. So why the need for the trial? Homeowners see photos like I showed you in the last slide of nice green, beautiful lawn and they plant it in their uh, front lawns and then the first winter shows up in Oregon and their lawn looks like this and they're not prepared for it. Here are a couple more photos from one of our tall fescue trials about 10 years ago at the Lewis Brown Farm. You can see there's multiple varieties on the left and they all look about the same and then there's a close-up here on the right. So what's going on? Well there's a couple things. First, uh, tall fescue is susceptible to net blotch, which is a leaf spot disease. It can get microdokium patch. But I think driving it more than anything is dormancy. And I think what happens is the tall fescue starts going dormant and stops growth. And then the, the diseases move in and basically turn all the tissue brown. So here's a photo of the trial just to show you the layout. Um, we'll come back to this picture later, but I wanted to give you a sense of just what the trial looked like and how it was laid out. You can't really tell from this photo, but going long ways from near to far, um, each one of these plots is mowed at two heights. We ended up choosing um, two inches and three inches just to look at the height because we saw something that was interesting. And so we added that as a factor. So our main question was what rate and frequency of nitrogen are necessary to improve the quality of tall fescue in the winter? And my hypothesis was basically I wanted to keep the growth growing so it didn't go into dormancy. And if we could do that, then um, I, th I think the hope was to get less disease. Now the problem is, is that if you push it too much, then microdokium patch in theory would be much worse. So we didn't really know where that line was, which is a secondary uh, goal of the trial. Before I show you some pictures, I'll just sort of give you the basics of the location of the trials at Lewis Brown Horticulture Farm in Corvallis, Oregon. It was conducted on Thor tall fescue, which is a variety from Columbia seeds and it was planted uh, last summer, July 14th. Um, it, uh, the soil type is Malibon silty clay loam with a pH around six. We again, we had two mowing heights, which we were bagging clippings uh, using a rotary mower. The trial initiated in mid-September. Uh, the plot sizes were five by five and there were three factors, end rate, timing, and mowing height. Here's a list of all the treatments, uh, the nitrogen timing and rate treatments. And just remember that each one of these all had two mowing heights. So this, the number would actually double. But basically the way you can think of this is the three colors signify the nitrogen rate. So you can either think of it as pounds per year. So we chose three rates, two pounds, four pounds, and six pounds, which translated into four tenths of a pound per application, eight tenths of a pound per application, or 1.2 pounds per application. And then we chose sort of four timings. The first one was Alex holiday plan, which basically correlates to applying fertilizers around Memorial Day, July 4th, Veterans Day, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And then um, we went from there, we chose um, uh, number three was we actually did September, October, November, and December. And then two is basically the holiday plan with 
um, just switched instead of September, November, and December, we went September, October, and November. So that they're all early. And then lastly, treatment four was um, only one application in the fall, and then the rest of it basically spring and summer apps. So those timings are duplicated at each rate. We wanted to use one fertilizer for all the apps. That was our goal. So because we were doing winter fertilizer applications, one of the things was it had to release in cold weather. I also wanted to shoot for basically a 50-50 quick slow release fertilizer ratio. So this is exactly 50% urea and 50% uh, polymer coated sulfur coated urea. And I also wanted a fertilizer with N, P, and K. Now, if you're doing it for practical reasons, you could switch fertilizers, but you would want to use um, something that releases in certainly October or November and December is going to release in cold weather. Um, you could substitute probably solubles if you wanted during that time. And then, you know, if you want to use organic in the summer um, or something like methylene urea potentially um, or polymer coated urea in the summer or early fall, those would work as well. So now we're going to take a look at some photos from uh, February 17th of this year. And they're, they're arranged, the treatments are arranged in basically clockwise order. So on the top left is treatment one, on the top right is treatment two, on the bottom right is treatment three, and on the bottom left is treatment four. And just sort of to keep um, kind of the way this is going to work, one and two are the two plots on the top have received three applications. Now the timing's a little bit different on the first two, September, November, December on treatment one, and September, October, November on two. The treatment three on the right corners received four apps and on the bottom left has only received one app. And so basically the thing that jumps out to me is the one app here at 0.4 is clearly not enough. And um, you know, there's not a lot of difference between treatment one and two and treatment three is, is the best quality. This set of pictures is arranged exactly the same. The only difference here is that this is at 0.8 pounds of N and you can see the quality improves uh, quite a bit from the last set. And, you know, again, the, the treatment five and six, which have both have three applications, there's not a lot of difference. So the timing there um, didn't seem to matter. Although, you know, at a different point in time, if you looked at um, obviously maybe early December where the treatment six had a November app and treatment five didn't, you know, that treatment six might be a little bit better during that time period. Treatment seven still looks the best. It's received the most uh, N. And again, treatment eight, um, even at eight, uh, eight tenths of a pound N, um, that wasn't enough uh, fertilizer with one application in September to provide good quality. Now we look at the last four pictures, and this is the um, at 1.2 pounds of N per thousand square feet, perhaps, so the high rate. And here it looks like that the uh, first uh, treatment nine has better quality than treatment 10, and that probably has to do with just the timing of this photo, because this was made in um, mid to late December, and so it's some of that nitrogen obviously is still holding on where the Treatment 10 is um, looks like it's losing some of the nitrogen which occurred in November. So whether that translates to less disease as we go forward in the spring or maybe more disease because it, it starts getting microdochium patch, we'll have to wait and see. On the bottom right, again, that's four applications. So that plot looks better than all of them. Um, it, this, you know, just in general, the the treatment 11 with the high rate with four applications has been the best plot in the whole trial. And then the bottom left there, treatment 12, even at 1.2 pounds of N applied in September, that's not enough fertilizer to keep, um, to keep the quality up on tall fescue in the fall. I thought I would include some close-up photos and this is at, of different dates. So here's December 22nd. And again, we're going to start, they're, they're organized in the same fashion, treatment one, two, three, and four. This is the two inch side. I, I didn't take pictures of three inches. And this is quarter pound of N per thousand square feet per app. And you can see that um, none of these plots look, um, look great. You know, even, even four apps at quarter pounds did not produce uh, great turf quality. Now, if we look at the plots applied with 0.8 pounds of N per thousand square feet per app, 
1222, we see that treatment six and seven have the best quality. Treatment six has received three applications, September, October, and November. And if we compare that to treatment five, it's only received two applications, September and November. The December app was made after these pictures were taken. Finally, the bottom left, treatment eight, is the poorest quality among these. Um, again, one application at 0.8 pounds is not enough to um, sustain tall fescue in the fall. Finally, if we look at the plots treated at 1.2 pounds N per thousand square feet per app, again, we see treatment 10 and 11 that have received um, three applications. The plots here, again, were fertilized after these treatments were taken. Treatment nine is, is a little bit less um, in quality because it's only received two apps up to this point. And you can see treatment 12 with one application, the quality is not even at 1.2 pounds is not acceptable. Now, if we fast forward to photos taken on January 22nd, so a month later, these are plots treated with uh, four tenths of a pound. We see that um, treatment one and treatment two are similar. They both received three apps at this point. And um, treatment one actually looks a little better, likely because the, the third app was made in December on treatment one and the third app for treatment two was made in November. Um, when we look at treatment three, that's the best quality of them all that, that received four apps at four tenths. Um, the quality isn't fantastic, but it it's, looks um, okay there. And then of course, one app in September at four tenths of a pound is not gonna be high enough. Now, if we look at the eight tenths of a pound of N per thousand square feet apps taken on January 22nd, we see a big increase in the color um, of treatment five, six, and seven. I think just doubling that rate has made a, a big impact on the quality. Um, treatment seven still has the best quality and treatment six and treatment five look pretty similar at this point. Treatment eight still, um, you can see even at eight tenths of a pound, it's not enough fertilizer to get you through the, the winter. And finally, looking at the plots applied with 1.2 pounds of N per thousand square feet per app on January 22nd. Again, we see an increase in green color. Um, the quality increases quite a bit and the treatment 11 still has the best quality. Um, so um, four apps is still better than three. There's not much of a difference between treatments 10 and treatment nine. And even at 1.2 pounds um, applied in September, that's not enough um, fertilizer to sustain tall fescue through the winter. So I just wanted to show a couple quick pictures taken from a little bit farther back, kind of over time to give you a sense of what the quality looked like um, throughout the trial. So this was taken November 21st, and you can see sort of the, um, you know, um, the plots, um, you can kind of see the half plots in these, especially in the second rep right above kind of the light box there. You can see the, the three inches is greener than the two inch, um, but it just gives you an indication of kind of the status of the whole trial in, in November. And then if we look in December, we can see the plots are deteriorating from those um, plots that had uh, did not have enough nitrogen. And you can kind of see on the left some of the plots that have gotten um, a good amount or at the high rates frequently, they're much uh, higher quality. And then here's a picture in January, the light's a little funky, but you can kind of see, you know, the quality of the, of the um, low end plots is still not very good. This is a picture again from the November time period, the same picture as before. And I just wanted to point something out, the mowing height differences. If you look at the plot, um, three plots up from the light box or the third plot starting the light box in plot one, two, three, and then one to the left, you can see the, the left hand side of that plot is really green and the lower side is, is um, much yellower. And basically this just shows what we saw early in the trial where um, 
when we mowed it at three inches, the three inch tended to hide the disease. The disease appeared to still be there. It was just under the canopy, and the, but the higher tissue was greener. You can also see that if you look a little bit farther on the other side of the trial, there's also tall fescue, but there are bigger blocks. And you've got the, 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 some blocks look a lot browner. Um, they kind of alternate. There's a brown block and a green block. And basically that's the mowing height effect as well. So just to kind of summarize the early observations in mowing height is that early in the trial, the three inch mowing height uh, hid the disease under the taller canopy. It appeared that the, the, the tall fescue was still getting disease. It just was lower in the canopy. And the two inch, um, you know, appeared to have more disease, um, and it, but it was just be likely because it was more visible. So that might be a strategy early in the fall. It doesn't seem to be, that effect hasn't, um, hasn't really uh, maintained itself over as the trial has gone on. The plots that are healthy seem to be green and the plots that aren't healthy uh, just seem to be you know, brown and yellow. So I wanted to close with showing you this photo, which was taken January 22nd. And what I'm gonna do is um, show you the plot map uh, map next in the correct orientation and the final then I'll go back to this and I'll show you some of the treatments uh, numbers this um, what this allow you to do is you can come here and uh, print out the plot map or write down the plot numbers and allow you to look at which treatments are which and sort of compare them in your own time without me talking about them individual. I will talk about a few of them and I'll make some conclusions at the end, but, uh, but I think this will allow you to take more time and look at them and see what, you know, make your own conclusions about what's acceptable and not. So here's the, um, the plot map on the left and it's in the same orientation that the photo that I just showed you is in. And so on the bottom left is one and the bottom right is 11. And, and I'm gonna show you that photo here in a second. And then here are the treatments again. So you can either write these down on a sheet of paper or do a screen paste and print it out. And then you can look at the photo and bring it up and, and compare it. So here's the photo again, and I put some treatment numbers down. And you can see treatment 11 on the uh, bottom right is uh, four applications at the high rate. And it's pretty easy to pick out which one is treatment 11. So that, re that main remains um, sort of the best quality. Treatment seven is four applications at, at eight tenths of a pound. And that's done pretty well. It's not quite as good a quality. Um, Treatments 12 and 4 up here on the right are interesting because those are 12 is um, 1.2 pounds of N applied in September and 4 is 0.4 pounds. So they don't look much different. Um, so come January, you know, the fact that you applied um, 1.2 pounds of N did not uh, help you much um, versus the 4 tenths of a pound. Looking over here at the left, treatment 10 versus treatment 6. That's three apps. Um, treatment 10 is applied at 1.2 pounds of N and treatment six at 0.8. And they look pretty similar to me. And, and that looks, you know, that those look marginally acceptable. You can see treatment eight and treatment 12. Those are both one application applied in September. Treatment eight's eight tenths of a pound and treatment 12 is 1.2 uh, pounds of N. So, you, you know, again, uh, September apps, no matter what rate you apply it, at least up to 1.2 pounds, it did not, was not enough to, um, to create good turf quality going through the winter. So just remember, um, this is based on observations. We haven't run data yet, so it's, you know, first year trial, but basically our conclusion so far, you know, four monthly apps at 1.2 pounds N per thousand square feet has resulted in the best turf quality and the least disease. Uh, one application, even at the high rate of 1.2 pounds, has not resulted in acceptable turf quality. Uh, four apps at four tenths of a pound is borderline acceptable, you know, depending on what your standards are. Some may think it's acceptable, some may not. And then the three inch mowing height appeared to mass the disease versus the two inch mowing height. It's not clear whether these plots had less disease. Um, the disease is just lower in the ca canopy. Thank you for watching. I did make want to point a couple things out. One, this fall has been exceptionally dry. So 
Um, the results this year might be different than what we see next year. Also, the trial just started in September and treatment 4, 8, and 12 only had their September application. So that's only one of their five apps they're gonna get. So it'll be interesting to see on those treatments when they get their four applications, how that affects uh, their fertility going into the fall and maybe the September app, only app will uh, carry them longer because it had received a lot more fertilizer in the spring and the summer. So that'll be interesting. If you have any questions, you can always email me at brian.mcdonald.oregonstate.edu. And we have also a lot of just general good turf information on beaverturf.com. Have a great day.